Okay. Let's uh let's stroll down to the avenue of nonsense and poppycock and see if we can clarify things and be truth seekers. Um about lenses. Um now obviously there is gonna be variation and I'm gonna do a test next and uh, post the results depending on pixel pitch. And, you know, the camera used, as far as the camera used, means the 80 converter and the SNR firmware, and now it actually affects the ultimate RAW, or hopefully you're not shooting JPEGs, the ultimate image that you're producing. So you can have the same lens, you know, like in this exquisite 85mm 1.4 uh, Zeiss uh, Planar, unlike the Fuji X-Pro2 or an Icon D750. And, you know, you're going to get different images. And that is over the same period of exposure, shutter, and uh, luminal intensity, aperture, you know, you're going to end up with different images. Well, it's because of pixel pitch. And uh, also due to SNR firmware and how the uh, camera processes the image. How Fuji or Nikon or Sony or anybody else decides to. So you have multiple images out of the exact same damn lens. But all of those things put aside, which you can't put them aside, but everything being equal, which they never are since there are many different cameras. Someone pointed me to a video uh, recently that uh, the, uh, the uh, photography reviewer was uh, asked about uh, flat images and uh, you know how a lens renders images. And uh, let's just cut to the chase here and say that, you know, as I've said a thousand times before, those people that have tried and used a lot of different lenses. And I mean a lot, or about that many, about that many. This person says that these people uh, talk about these lenses as if they have mystical qualities. Well, no, that's not the case. And uh, he brings up a wine analogy, which is a really good analogy, because, you know, you could give, uh, you know, a drunk on the street a bottle of Ripple with high alcohol content, or whatever the hell they call that cheap rot gut that they sell at Walgreens, I don't drink, what do I know? And you can give him a $1,000 bottle of Italian Barbera, and uh, he'll like the crap with a higher alcohol content than the $1,000 stuff. And when it comes to people, no offense, but most of you are like the drunk out on the street. And, you know, it's okay. You know, you're drunk out on the street. You'd rather have the high alcohol content. You know, someone might love uh, really good uh, global contrast out of a lens. You could have really good uh, contrast... <clears throat> have poor micro contrast, uh, you know, vignetting issues, color saturation issues. Most people only buy lenses based upon one thing. How sharp is it? How sharp is it? Uh, you know, you know there are a lot of qualities of lenses other than resolution, right? And then this person says, um, people like this think that Leica lenses, for example, have mystical qualities, but I just can't see it. Well, I'm in full agreement with him there. I believe that he can't see it. And that's the case for most people. They can't see it. You know, they're, you know. This is not offensive. I mean, if you take offense at it, it's just most people are like, you know, the drunk out on the street. People that base a lens quality strictly on resolution is like a, uh, you know, a stumble bum drunk who only bases, uh, you know, wine on its alcohol content. content. It's ridiculous, isn't it? I like that stuff with the high alcohol content. Ah. Is that all that matters? Yeah, that's all that matters to me, baby. You know, people are judging lenses strictly based upon resolution. It's an insanity. You know, as much as I can't stand the, uh, you know, the wine-snipping uh, pseudo-intellectual, uh, you know, the hoity-toits that sit there and sip wine, you know, People like that, in the lens world, the very few people that have sampled a lot of lenses, they can tell you the difference between a, uh, this person says they couldn't tell the difference between a uh, Nikon and a Leica lens. Oh yeah, well I can, and those people can too. Just because you can't, doesn't mean we cannot. Okay? So, he, then he says, people, we should have a blind study to see if people can tell. Well, that won't tell you anything. That's just like giving a bunch of stumble bums the same sort of a wine test, except you're giving them a lens test. Depends on what sort of people you ask. You know, you're asking the sophisticated people that know a fine wine uh, from a Walgreens, uh, you know, uh, where they get those, sell those things in, uh, 
uh, you know, cardboard milk carton things, you know, the, the wine that's dispensed from the cardboard. Well, of course, if you ask people in general, they won't know the difference. You know, this is exactly what someone would do. They would take a bunch of pictures between a Leica uh, or a Zeiss and a Nikon lens. And let's say Nikon doesn't have some good lenses, they do. You know, you're going to ask the general population photographers a difference. You're, you're barking up the wrong tree, dude. That is what we call a defective experiment. Right off the bat, it's defective. You know, drunks can't tell the difference between Ripple and a thousand dollar bottle of Italian wine. Why the hell makes you think that a common photographer knows the difference as far as the raw file looking on the, you know, Lightroom between, uh, you know, an average Nikkor and a Zeiss? Not to say Zeiss doesn't have a few crappy lenses, they definitely do. Especially their ultra wides. Every lens company makes some dog lenses. Fuji makes a couple dogs. Zeiss makes some dogs. Canon makes a lot of dogs. So, this is a defective experiment. Um, as far as lenses are concerned, if you think that a lens is strictly its refractive indices and its nano coatings, you know, you know how much nano coatings and AR coatings count for the ultimate image rendition? Not anywhere near as much as you think. You know what does count for a lot? ED glass, aspherical elements. Here's something you should know, and nobody really out there knows anything about this, and they have no idea what its importance is. Why do you think these ED uh, element lenses are doped, it means in the process of the glass, embedded in the glass, are these uh, lanthanum dioxide, niobium oxide, thorium oxide, zirconium dioxide, titanium dioxide, calcium fluoride, why do you think that stuff is in there? Do you even know what the hell a lens is? Well, sure I know what a lens is. It's, it's an optical device with certain refractive indices and multiple glass elements that allows for the best transmission of light. Well, that's partially true. Until people see lenses for what they are, you see light is a coaxial circuit. It's electrical, bitch. Until people see uh, lenses as uh, EM antennas, you know, like a Yagi antenna, a dipole antenna, antennas. Most people don't know anything about antennas, okay? They have a certain ratings for gain, you know, transmission, gain. They'll never understand a lens via pure optical qualities. They'll talk about resolution and vignetting and chromatic aberration. You know, this lens, by the way, is exquisite. It's 8514. It's just the tits. Wide open. In high contrast scene, it's got a lot of chromatic aberration. Well, that means the lens is not good. No, actually, that is perfect rendering. If that lens was speaking to you, it would be telling you to put on special glasses, and you could actually see that image pop. Kind of like, you know, the 3D glasses you used to put on the red and the blue ones or at the movie theater. That image would literally pop right off the damn paper. But human beings don't want to see that chromatic aberration. But that lens is actually, if it could talk to you, it's like, that is three-dimensional depth. I just rendered it exactly the way I saw it. It's just that that's not what human beings want to see. We don't like, I don't like that purple frangang. Yeah, well, you know what? That is the lens actually telling you what depth is. I'm not saying that chromatic aberration is a good thing. You know, people don't want to see it. But the fact is, and this is, not what you, this is what you're not getting through your thick skull, is that is actual depth. You see? The way that near-end spectrum and far-end spectrum light, the red end of the spectrum, the blue end of the spectrum, how it actually interacts with objects and is reflected off of them and transmitted through this lens. You see? They have different capacitances and rates of transmission through the glass. These ED doped glass uh, lenses that are inside these, uh, you know, expensive uh, lenses, they are designed to have specific output qualities. You can never judge a lens strictly based upon its refractive indices. You can never do it. What the hell do you think these ED element uh, uh, additives are added to the glass for? Niobium dioxide, thorium oxide. What do you think it's in there for? You know what the secret ingredient? in Zeiss lenses and Voigtlander lenses is? It's lead. You ever, seen, you ever heard of crystal glass? Sure you have. Swarovski crystal, you know, the, uh, the ball that drops on your... You ever notice that uh, crystal glass has really, really unique uh, properties when it comes to light striking it? One of the secret ingredients 
in Zeiss lenses. And white lens, lead. Lead. And there is an exception in the EU rules, I forget what number it is, that allows for lead. Since the Europeans have banned anything that could possibly kill you, there is an exemption of the use of lead in manufacturing when it comes to optical devices. So don't hit me up with that European uh, rules and regulations crap because there is an exemption for it. It's even listed on Zeiss's own website in a very, very obscure place. But I knew that. I mean, you know, I know glass. I can look at it and go, that's leaded glass. That's crystal glass. You can actually, I mean, you can even feel it, by the way. You can give the lens to Helen Keller. It's like, oh, that's pretty damn heavy. Why is it so crystal and glass? Why do you think leaded glass is so damn heavy? People say, why is this lens so heavy? Why are Leica lenses heavy? Why is Leica... It's because it's lead. You know, lead is heavy. <clears throat> you know, lanthanum oxide, for example, is an ingredient for the uh, manufacture of piezoelectric materials. Everything in the universe is capacitance, resistance, permeability, permittivity, dielectric permittivity, and magnetic permeability. You see, light is not a particle. It's not a wave either. It is a coaxial circuit. It is an electrical transmission. If you want to get to the hardcore nuts and balls and bolts of a lens, it is an electrical transmissive device. It is a capacitor, a resistor. Of course, it's designed to have certain capacitance properties and certain resistive properties. But those are the secret properties of lenses you'll never read about. It's like, well, it's got seven elements and four groups, or it's got 23. You know, that doesn't say anything. What do you think it took Zeiss and all these other people? What do you think these secret recipes are as far as lens manufacture? Because I could sit here with a, uh, a laser calibrator machine and actually take this lens apart and find out its exact refractive indices of each one of the elements in this lens. But that doesn't tell me shit. You understand that? I could take this lens apart, find out the exact refractive index, and it still won't tell me a crap-ass thing. And why is that? Because the composition of each one of these elements, how it's added, when it's added, the distribution, the density, is the magical property in every damn lens on Earth. Leica, Zeiss, Nikon, Fuji. That is the, the damn secret. A lens is always more than the summation of its parts. So this nonsense, you know, getting back to this other video that says, you know, uh, blind studies people couldn't tell. Well, yeah, you know, it's like asking, you know, you couldn't get a straight answer out of a bunch of drunks as so far as, you know, what's better, you know, a high alcohol content bottle of swill or, you know, a, a thousand dollar fine wine. That isn't a test. You can't, uh, you know, you can't give a bunch of... Uh, you know, a test of uh, what's a fine wine and what isn't to a bunch of alcoholics, nor could you tell, you know, from a bunch of people that don't have much experience with lenses, what the hell the difference between a fine Zeiss lens and, uh, you know, some, some crappy lens. Because <clears throat> 99 times out of 100, this one looks sharper. It's just like the alcoholic, they go, oh, I like that one because I can taste the alcohol in it. Ah. It's invalid test invalid test and if these people do that test then it's invalid because they'll be answering they'll be asking a bunch of commoners when it comes to lenses no offense what is the better image what's you know what's which is the Leica lens which is the Nikkor lens for example they won't know they have no experience to be able to look for properties of lenses they only know sharpness how sharp is that ah not good I believe in being smarter and wiser, okay? I don't believe in hard work, I believe in smart work. Catch you later. Bye.